played with the north-south east-west orientation very carefully to see if it did, does make a difference and I realized that I made a mistake um, turns out that the from the 555 timer uh, these two wires that represent the uh, uh, the pulse into the solenoids. If they move too close to the coil, um, then energy is conveyed onto the coil for, uh, just from these wires inductively. And when I rotated, uh, th this wire got too close. So I have to be careful to keep these wires uh, parallel and, and away, regardless of the orientation. When I do that, uh, north, south, east, west doesn't seem to make a difference. So. Um, now that north, south, east, west business um, was something described about Hendershot's toy, not necessarily his uh, mach uh, his fuelless generator. Um, I've got some new solenoids here that I'm experimenting with, and I've also added more windings to the coil to make them um, 216 microhendries. Um, I figured out. Uh, or sort of estimated that the permeability of these cans is around 3,400 or so. So I needed a bigger coil to tune for the um, 2082 hertz frequency that I was trying to tune for. And um, I took some measurements, uh, tried to um, plot um, frequency response, and I, I think I'm uh, pretty close now. Um, anyway, I, I've made it sort of another discovery to pass along. Um, if I take the um, center tap of these two solenoids, so um, there's a there's a wiring where these two solenoids are wired together, and then and then plus and minus. Uh, so one one is creating a north pole and one is creating a south pole opposite the magnets. Uh, that have a North Pole and South Pole. So when they are pulsed, they uh, the, they are creating a repulsion on the, on the two poles. Um, anyway, if I take the center tap and wire it over to one of these cylinders uh, to, uh, to connect to the cylinder, th this doesn't really make a connection to the capacitor, but it sort of implicitly does because the capacitor is wired around it. When I do that, and, um, oh, another change I made is um, I realized that uh, I only need to wire uh, one wire between the two tanks with the bridge rectifier um, between them. I, I, if I wire them in parallel, if I connected up the other side of the tank, uh, then that would have the effect of doubling the capacitance, sort of creating one tank circuit so with double the capacitance and half the inductance, which uh, would keep the same resonant frequency, but would reduce Q by a half. Um, and I don't want Q reduced, so I'm using a one-wire connection, and the bridge rectifiers in between them. I'm measuring DC voltage with a DC voltmeter. Um, there's no capacitor here, uh, so it's a kind of a um, uh, sliced waveform. I'll, I'll show you on the scope. And this is the waveform we see. sort of a way to sort of judge the voltage. Anyway, so when I put this center tap over to one of these containers so that it's able to sort of uh, more directly connect uh, this system, which is a 12 volt system, to the container and turn this on, um, the, the voltage I measure here is up in the 50, 50 volt range. And it is pretty proportional to frequency, so as frequency goes up, so does the voltage. I thought that was interesting. I'll put it at the 2082 point. Or close to it.
so 43 volts at this point. Um, so this is a pretty large voltage swing between the two tanks. Um, if I connect ground to the um, one side of the bridge, uh, one side of the bridge, the voltage drops down to nine volts. So certainly a very high voltage swing like this is a desirable thing.